Welcome to another week of Six Foot Fellowship. This has been an incredibly difficult week. With what we've seen in the news and the images, the protest, the inequality, all on top of lockdown, coronavirus, global pandemic. It has been a really, really difficult week. And all I can think of is, God, have mercy. God, have mercy. So as we sing these songs this morning, I ask you to join along and echo that prayer of, God, have mercy. God, have mercy. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. Till the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the be your name when the sun's shining down on me when the world's all as it should be blessed be your name blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering no there's pain in the offering Blessed be your name. Here in blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. Though the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord. 
the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your glorious Lift our eyes to see your 
provision of a world in urgent need. Grant us courage then to follow, bringing comfort with each deed. God of justice, love and mercy, with compassion let us care. As we come in humble weakness, may your strength be ours to share. Press our hearts to know the struggle of the ones we cannot see brother sister all who suffer may our kindness set them free god of justice love and mercy send us out and make us bold as we strive for your high calling let our hands your mercies hold you have blessed us with abundance gifts to share with those in need father son Holy Spirit, may we follow as you lead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may we follow as you that song becomes our prayer. God of justice, love and mercy with compassion, let us care. As we come in humble weakness, may your strength be ours to share. Impress our hearts to know the struggle of the ones that we cannot see. Our brothers and our sisters, all who suffer, May our kindness set them free. So Holy Spirit, we always need you, but we especially need you now. We need you to change our own hearts, to open up our own eyes, to let us see those that are suffering around us. We also need your mercy. We need you to rain down mercy and be present. Be present with those that are hurting. In your name we pray, amen. Now let's pray together the way that Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Do you remember in the days long ago when there was actually lots of traffic on the freeway? I remember long ago uh, driving to visit our son who lives about two hours inland. Easy peasy, I thought. But about halfway there, uh, sudden brake lights ahead of us really caused us to slow down quickly. And we went that slow and go uh, for a mile. And then it was slow and go for two miles. And it was hilly, so I couldn't really see too far ahead. And I, 
I was hoping not for an accident, of course, but that it was just some kind of brush fire on the side that everybody slowed down to look at. And once we get past that, we'd be back to full speed. But as we crested this hill and went over it, I looked ahead and I saw a river of red brake lights ahead of me as far as the eye could see. How long was this going to take? We have just passed the 12 week milestone of the virus causing us to shut down our economy with millions out of work, to have health mandates, to shelter in place, and have many restrictions on what we do in public or even if we go in public. And for the stressful settings of the medical personnel and the grocery workers and the police and fire responders and parents now for so long have, in addition to their jobs, been teachers in chief of their children at home. And while there's been some loosening of restrictions recently, still when we look ahead medically and for our safety, for our economy, and, and especially for our families, how long is this gonna take? I don't know about you, but there is this feeling of exhaustion <laughs> Exhaustion. It's slow and go. But wherever we are hurting, God has help for us. And so for every Sunday in June, I'm going to be talking about one of the four pain points. God's help for where we're hurting. These pain points uh, are feeling, that we're feeling and experiencing right now that I observe are exhaustion of body, mind, and spirit, frustration over the length of time this is taking, resignation that puts us into the pits of despair, and trepidation, really a fearfulness that we or someone we love will die from this disease. And now more recently, fears for some that they will die with a knee on their neck. God has real help for you when you are hurting. So let's hear from God's word specifically on today's pain point, exhaustion. Have you found yourself saying recently, I am just so tired, I feel so Weary. It's not like I'm, I'm doing a lot. I can't go very many places, but I'm just so tired. Several weeks ago, I had a single day when I experienced or observed the three types of exhaustion that we are feeling. Early in the morning, since I was the designated shopper in our family, I got up, uh, you know, at the, at the older people's hour uh, to go into our local uh, market. Uh, to shop, and I masked up and gloved up and uh, was glad there were no uh, lines. Uh, and I wiped down the already wiped down, you know, handle on the cart that I was using and went straight to the produce section and started getting my cucumbers and my lettuce and my cauliflower, you know, to stay healthy. But one elderly lady was loudly pestering one of the produce guys who's just stocking the, the place, uh, trying to put, you know, you know, keep the stock of produce good. And she kept really loudly saying, where are the red cabbages? Where are the red cabbages? And he was being as polite as he could. He said, ma'am, you know, we just got a truck. It's in the back. We're offloading things right now. As soon as we get that offloaded, I'm going to bring you a red cabbage. But she wasn't having any of it. And she did not want to wait. <laughs> and she got right in his face and loudly complained this. I believe I saw the look of fear in his eyes that this way too close, in your face encounter with somebody spewing all their stuff, emotionally and maybe physically, 
on him. That guy, that produce guy has got to go home emotionally exhausted. Then uh, it was the day of my nephew and his uh, wife's anniversary. I was able to perform the wedding three years prior uh, for them. And now they have a little boy, a little two-year-old, and, and uh, they live somewhat nearby. And I thought, you know, I, I didn't remember in time to put it in the mail, so I'll deliver it. And I texted them and said, I got an anniversary card for you. Can I make a contactless delivery? I'll stand six feet away. You know, I'll chuck the letter at you when you open the door. Don't worry. I won't come into your house, blah, blah, blah. And they said, please come on over. So I arrived and rang the doorbell and quickly, you know, stepped back. But it immediately the door was open and my tall, uh, you know, nephew, uh, you know, was at the door, you know, holding his, you know, beautiful uh, young son, you know, his arms and, and his son was full of life and, you know, waving at me and, and playing peekaboo and all that kind of stuff. But my nephew <laughs> looked exhausted. He'd been furloughed, you know, from his work several months previous and had been, you know, Mr. Mom, uh, Daddy Daycare all the time, you know, for the last two months. And his wife, uh, you know, still working from home, uh, bounded down the stairs and she looked exhausted too. I said, how are you doing? And she just laughed and she said, I am on Zoom meetings for work eight hours a day. <laughs> When I got to go into the office before this shutdown, you know, I could schedule my own work, but now I'm at the mercy, you know, of everybody wanting a Zoom meeting. And it books me. We are just so exhausted. Physical exhaustion. When do you feel physically exhausted? And then at the end of the day, as uh, the sun was going down, I sat on my patio on that same day, and I had meant to call a, a friend who was the executive director of uh, my favorite camp, Christian camp. And I called him, and I never forget his first words to me were, John, I, I just feel so weary. And this light went on in my head, and I realized that every owner of a business or every executive of a company or nonprofit or especially ministry, they carry the weight of not just their own livelihood, but of the mission of their organization and the livelihoods and the, and the future of their team, their staff. And that was what's weighing my friend down so deeply. He was mentally exhausted. When do you feel mentally exhausted? The prophet Isaiah gives us God's word for when and where we are weary. God's powerful word for when we're tired. A little background, Isaiah was a prophet called by God to speak his word to the people and the leaders of Judah, which at that time in 700 BC was the southern kingdom of the, the whole uh, group of, of Israel. And the people and the leaders were really tired. They were exhausted. King Ahaz and his advisors had made a lot of bad calls, bad decisions that opened the door to this foreign pagan Assyrian King Sennacherib to invade their country, to lay waste to their economy, and to kill a percentage of their population. The people of Judah were losing their way of life and their lives. And spiritually, the people were following their king's bad example, and they had begun to offer sacrifices to idols in degrading and uh, humiliating ways in hopes of getting things right. You know, when you're weary, you will grab anything if you think it'll help. But they set their sights in this idol worship way too low. Are you looking to governmental leaders to give you strength? Now, 
in our democracy, we should expect from our elected leaders competence and coordination and clear communication. And I personally am thankful for leaders in San Diego and Sacramento who have exhibited that. But if you only feel strong when you see leaders doing their part, or you only feel strong when you get to bash verbally a leader, then you are looking too low for strength. Are you looking to your fellow citizens to give you strength? It's true that every American has rights and responsibilities that we carry. And seeing other people's acts of compassion and courtesy to others is energizing. But if you only feel strong when you see others doing their part, but you get exhausted when they don't wear a mask, then you are looking too low for strength. Isaiah beckons us to look higher, to look to God for strength when we are weary. Isaiah chapter 40, beginning at verse 28. Hear the word of God. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. God gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall from exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Now listen to me carefully. At this moment in time in America, because a white cop's knee pressed down hard on a neck. A black man died. And all the weariness because of abuse of power, position, and privilege, that weariness has rightfully erupted into protest and demands for change. You and me feel weary over three months of sheltering in place. Think of the weariness of Americans who've been told to stay in their place or keep to your place because of their racial ethnicity. This weariness is felt in the soul of all of our communities of color. And it is felt by all Americans who will not settle for racism, who will not settle for abuse of power and position. God is giving strength to the weary today. But how do you, how do you access that power from God? How do you access and draw upon God's strength when you're weary? Well, amazingly, seemingly counterintuitively, God shows us how to be strong when he became weary. Think back to me, to the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. In an episode of Jesus' ministry, when he crossed the boundary to go into Samaria. Beginning at verse 4, Jesus had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from a long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon, a Samaritan woman came to draw water. 
And Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. Now God, the creator in heaven, never grows weary, but God took on our human flesh in Jesus and knows what weariness is like. Jesus deliberately went through Samaria to encounter Samaritans, the racial ethnic group that Jews, like Jesus was, had a long running suspicion of and strife with. God knows through his son, our savior, Jesus Christ, what weariness is physically, mentally, emotionally. Let that truth sink in. And what did Jesus do as an example to us at that water well? He asked for help. Please give me a drink, he said. She had something he didn't have, a bucket. Only she could reach down and draw up the weary water from the well of Samaritan experience of all their history of being put into place and separated from others. Jesus asked to share her water. She had just walked from her home. He'd walked miles and miles. The savior of ours who changed water into wine, who'd taken five loaves and just two fishes and created a banquet picnic for thousands. He had all the resources, yet he asked her, I want to drink your water. I want to know your experience. You and me have got to ask for help. There's strength and humility to lean into another person's experience of weariness. And wherever it comes from, whatever its reasons, we follow Jesus when we ask to share that with them. Jesus humbly crossed over the racial barrier that had been erected and electrified by Jews and Samaritans for hundreds of years. And he started a conversation that surprised her. It was not a kumbaya conversation that ignored reality between them in order to paper over a peace deal that wasn't really real. No. Jesus and her talked truth to one another you might think Jesus, as the Son of God, had a bit of an advantage in that conversation about truth, and he did. But read the story. He neither condescended to her, nor did he cut her off. He acted redemptively. Restoration took place between them, and for her, restoration to God. I've heard so many times, and it grieves my soul, I've heard so many times from white Christians, that Jesus never got in the face of those with authority. Jesus never caused damage. Jesus, Jesus never protested. And I say, man, what, what Bible are you reading? <laughs> Just alone, think of him in the temple, literally causing damage to the money changers and the tables of the dove sellers because they cluttered God's house and kept all people from all walks of life to be able to, from being able to worship the Lord. In no way do I or any followers of Jesus ever advocate violence or destruction of other people's property. But Jesus, in this Samaritan episode, stands with the Samaritans, goes to the Samaritans, sits and drinks the water of their weary experience in order for restoration to take place. 
by his presence there, Jesus was bringing the power and presence of God to change what was wrong that had been going on for too, too long. So where do you need to be? What's your Samaritan water well at this moment in time in America? It might be at a protest march to add your peaceful yet urgent voice to the call for change. Don't let the camo-covered gun toters steal the spotlight of this moment in America. Now, not everybody physically or for health reasons can join a protest march at this moment, perhaps. But each of us are in conversations right now in this moment in time, all the time. We can be like Jesus in those conversations. Humble, strong, leaning in to understand as best we can the other person's experience, and clearly speaking words of justice and peace. When you and I do that, we will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not faint. God gives weak, gives power to the powerless. Let's pray. Lord, God, we lift up all our experiences of exhaustion, whether they be physically, emotionally, mentally, racially. We lift them to you, Lord. And we look to you for strength that fills our souls, that gives animation to our our bodies, that ignites and triggers hope, not just that we will get out of the sheltering in place time eventually, though that, Lord, we pray for, but God, that you will move in a mighty way in our country, that you will bring change that is just and true and good, both legally in the halls of power and in the neighborhood streets, in the boardrooms, God, that you will move in a mighty way, giving strength to the weary. Lord, this scripture specifically speaks to the young and the youths. And I pray for them, Lord. And I thank you for when they speak up in righteous, in good ways. Thank you, Lord, for even recently them calling out those that were trying to to tangle the message Uh, with violence and they called them out and they stopped it thank you Lord for that thank you for youth that lead the way and Father we thank you for all those who make decisions I thank you for our chief of police who uh, initiated uh, the changing uh, of police practice regarding the car car to a grasp And God, we pray for all those who put themselves on the line in these public, uh, fraught, tense situations. We pray for our police officers and our medical personnel and our firemen. We pray, Lord, that the adversarial nature goes down. That would be a miracle. And we pray that the justice and the unity would go up. Lord, we're not singing Kumbaya right now. We are speaking straight words of truth back and forth. Come be with us. Transform this moment for our nation to take great strides forward and for the weariness to be lessened and overcome. That we will rise up as if on eagles' wings and to be a nation truly to be proud of 
and that can beckon others to follow in our practice. Lord, we're not there yet. We need your strength. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to sing an old hymn called Abide With Me. And the words simply say this, Abide with me, fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, oh abide with me. Swift to its closed ebb out life's little day, earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away, change and decay and all around I see. O thou who changes not, abide with me. And as I sing this song, I put together a montage of the videos and pictures that have been in the news this week that would help us in, in a posture of prayer and a posture of solidarity. So let these images and this song move you to prayer. Abide with me, fast for the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless soul abide with me. Swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changes not, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. One but thy grace can foil the tempter's power. Who, like thyself, my guide and stay can be. Through cloud and sunshine, O oh, abide with me. I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Hills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is death's sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. Hold thou thy cross before thy closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the sky. Heaven's morning breaks and earth vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O oh Lord, abide with me.